Alright, this is the new enclosure for the frequency counter. It uh, actually came out pretty well. I'm impressed. I don't have it hooked up to any signal, so all you see is the test signal there. Uh, not, no changes to the board, just same thing. I added the battery there, I <laughs> put tape around it. This is the first time I've ever cut metal like this, so it's not, uh, not very good. I opened up a hole with the Dremel and a disc tool and then I stuck a jigsaw in there with a metal cutting bit and um, and made that so it's not great but it's a start and then I got this box for two dollars and ninety nine cents at Radio Shack which is weird they normally don't sell stuff I find useful but I found one of these all metal boxes and I the store here in Gainesville Florida does not carry these but when I visited Orlando for spring break they had them so I'm gonna try to get the local store to order some but for two ninety nine that's not bad and it's made of uh, sheet metal aluminum so I'm going to screw it in and hook it up to a signal and see how it goes. Here's the circuit I'm going to try to test and measure frequency. And I haven't actually tested this before I started taking video, so I might be playing a little joke on myself here if it doesn't work. Um, this is just a microchip programming development board I made. Uh, it's not doing anything with this except sending it power, so I'm just getting 5 volts of power. This is just a microcontroller uh, being clocked with a crystal at 10.140 megahertz. This is a very simple QRSS transmitter. It's like a radio beacon. And it uses the clock output pin to deliver square waves at 10 megahertz, 10.14 megahertz, to trigger the uh, gate of a MOSFET to act as a class C amplifier. But I have the amplifier disabled right now. There's no high voltage here. So it's just producing five volt square waves out of here. But I can try to hook it up to here, but before I do, I'm going to make sure it's working. Clamp on my oscilloscope. Make sure I get the right pin here. So I clamped it on and turn the brightness down so you can see it on this camera. There we go. Alright, so you can see we've got square waves, about 5 volts. So that's uh, exactly what we want. Um, so the signal is coming out. And now the moment of truth. I didn't put gator clips or anything fancy on here. I just have these little uh, pins. So I'm going to have to hold it there. I'm going to have to hold the camera and hold these two pins in the right place. So we'll see what happens. Oh man. This might be an epic failure in the making. Alright. Oh, this is a lot harder than I expected it to be. Come on. You know, I'm going to put the camera down and uh, do this in a second. Okay, I improved the situation a little bit. I gator clipped ground there, and now I have a pin I can work with. Work with. So I can just touch the pin wherever I want, and I can determine frequency. So I'm going to try to determine frequency on the output right here. Look at that. 10.140 megahertz. So this thing works pretty well. When I remove it, it just shows the last counted frequency and it updates, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 times a second. So if you just kind of tap it, you get funny results. But as long as you hold a good connection, I said, as long as you hold a good connection, there we go, it should work. And I don't have enough hands to adjust frequency, but I imagine if we uh, adjusted frequency on the dial, you'd see it change on the screen. So there's 10 megahertz. I'm going to try with a couple other frequency sources to see if it's actually the right speed. Actually, I'll just put in some different crystals here. We'll see how it goes. That was a 10 megahertz, 10.140 megahertz crystal. I just found a 14, what is this? 14.06 megahertz crystal. 14.06 megahertz. Slip it in there. Should be producing square waves. And I turned it off. 14.06, look at that. Awesome. So here's a frequency counter. Gosh, it can't be more than $10. This is about $10 worth of parts. And as you can see, it's probably not scientific grade, but it's certainly functional enough to work in a, a radio transceiver as a frequency display to determine if you're within legal limits or just a nice piece of test equipment. Man, for 10 bucks, that's pretty cool. So if you have any questions, send me an email. My contact information is on my website swharden.com s-w-h-a-r-d-e-n.com good luck if you try making one I, if, if anyone else out there makes one send me a picture I'd love to see what you came up with and uh, as far as boxes go I'm still pretty impressed with this thing I should probably improve these connectors
like, like I said, it's 2.99 at Radio Shack. It's uh, battery powered, so it's I can just take it with me wherever I go. Pretty cool. All right, take it easy, guys.